Have you ever failed at something? I know I have. But have you failed at something where you're stood there in your undercrackers in front of millions of people in the thing that you've dedicated most of your life to? This conversation is with my friend, my training partner, Sam Patterson. This is an uncomfortable conversation for me. Knowing Sam and the respect that I have for UFC athletes, I just don't know what to say to athletes when they don't get the result that they're looking for. And that was very raw for me with Sam. We're a close team and we saw him go through that. But I thought it would be an important conversation for Sam to share his journey from taking an L in his UFC debut to coming back and getting a win. So please enjoy this conversation with UFC welterweight, Radlitt's own, Sam Patterson. Definitely felt the, felt the lows. Sam, uh, obviously uh, the, your UFC debut didn't go as you expected. Dream to nightmare, and um, I paid the price. A man of fighters that are now champion lost their debut. Because in my head, I was the only one. That bit, how you come back from it, how you move forward, how you get past it, that makes a difference. <laughs> I went out to Thailand, trained a couple of weeks, felt real sick. I walk up the stairs, I'd be gassed, and that's not me. So I knew something was really wrong. I had to sit down, I couldn't like do anything. I couldn't like get my body to work. And then obviously I went to the hospital, I had all kind of, having to have heart tests and stuff like that. And that was the turning point. I'm not sick and tired of the game. I'm sick and tired of the struggle. And that's totally different because I love the game. So a few days back now from Canada, yeah. has it been the victory parade since your homecoming? <laughs> <laughs> it's been. Nothing different to win or lose, and I'm always straight back in the gym. I've yeah. said this time and time again, like I don't go on no victory tour, I don't go drinking, I don't disappear for weeks. I was back in the gym, I landed Wednesday, six o'clock in the morning, I was back in the gym by the afternoon, like oh, straight Jesus. away. I'd go on the treadmill and start watching fights and studying, and you know me personally, you know I'm always in the gym and I'm not lying. Yeah, yeah. So, all right, well, let's, let's go to the moment then. This win, Canada, yeah. you know, He's the hometown guy, all of these things. But just give us a sense. I, I, I kind of frame it like this. That there's so few people, if you would take the percentage of people in the world that get to feel what it's like to be in front of a crowd like that and then have your arm raised. Like give us a sense of where that's at because there's a lot that has gone into that yeah. and I want to unpick that on the back of it. Yeah, like to be fair, if you look at me when I win, I'm not... I'm quite emotional. I feel emotionless. I don't really lose control of myself. I'm quite reserved when it comes to it. So when my hand was raised, in my inside, I've got like a little me bouncing up and down going crazy. But when I've watched it back, I'm like, I'm quite reserved. I'm kind of, I'm smiling. I'm happy. But what makes me happy more is seeing how happy everyone else is around me, like my coaches, um, my team, like things like that. So when my hand's raised, it was like a, a relief, but a kind of like a... Yeah, I finally got to show what I am capable of. And in the moment, you're not thinking of anything. Your hands raised, you do, it's, it's all done. It's not till you go backstage and it all comes like, you kind of come off this adrenaline high, it starts to sink in. And you can't remember any of it till you watch it back and go, oh, I was acting like that or feeling like that, you know? Yeah. But I'm quite reserved in a way that I know what I'm capable of and I was happy that I've got the victory, especially coming off the last one. I was happy to get in there and show what I'm really capable of. And yeah, just seeing, it made me smile more watching, I see Dave and Reese when my hands raised, they're just to the side of me. Yeah. And I see how happy they are. That's what made me smile. Not the win itself, more just seeing how happy it makes them. Yeah. And yeah, that's how I felt. Why do you think that is though? Particularly after this fight, I thought when you got that submission, in typical Sam fashion, this isn't a trademark thing. I know this yeah. isn't kind of designed, but you're very respectful. And I think that was noted on, on this yeah. occasion. Very respectful. You had your moment, but there was no outpouring of emotion or like exultation, uh, considering, again, what had gone on in your debut. Yeah, like, uh, again, visualizing the fight and everything like that, you have these scenarios like, I could not wait to win. And in my head, I was like, I'm going to. Like, not even like, I'm not emotional as in I cry or anything. Very rarely have I ever cried in anything. I'm just very emotionless. You're, but you're a really happy person. Yeah, and I, I, I was happy I won. But for some reason, I just, I don't know, I just feel very reserved in their moments. But when I'm backstage and I'm with my team and everything, around, around the people I um, trust and I'm close to, I'm happy. Like, I'm smiling, everyone knows right. it. But in the moment after the fight, I, again, I, 
I'm very respectful. I make a thing of that like after the fight because it see, comes across like I'm not before because I don't touch gloves when we're about to fight. I've just, I'm just up for the fight. Let's get the fight done. And that's predetermined though, isn't it? But, I think you've you've said that. To yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I don't like. Yeah, yeah. Like if they look like some some fighters don't. This guy didn't. And even he come up to me after the fight and he said, "Oh, there's no disrespect to the Wayans or stuff because he come back to get my face." Yeah. And I was like, "No, it's okay, man. Like I don't I don't care for that. Like I don't yeah. care. I'm ready to fight." So and the same like when we're in the cage, sometimes fighters look at you and give you like the "Do you want touch gloves before?" And I'm kind of like, "No, let's fight." And yeah. I sh and it shows win or lo win or lose. I show that respect after. I bow yeah. to my opponents. I, I'm not being disrespectful. I'm just ready to fight. I don't want to touch your hand before we're about to just knock each other to pieces. So let's get the fight done. Then we'll show respect to each other. Win or loss. Like, either way. So, yeah, like after the fight, I was I was happy. But I'm, I'm, I've just noticed, like, no, look at any of my fights. I'm, I'm never, ju I might jump on the cage maybe once in my whole thing of winning. Like, yeah. maybe once. I'm quite reserved. Kind of not... It's not like cocky is in the fact I'm. Exp I I think I'm going to do this. It's kind of like you train so hard, and you prepare to go in there and win. So when it happens, you're kind of not surprised. Yeah, that's the kind of feeling I get. It's expected. It's expected, but it's not in a cocky way. Like I don't feel yeah. like I'm being. Oh, I'm not showing. I should have done that. Yes, it could be a tough. Maybe if it was a tougher fight and I had some adversity and stuff, maybe I'd be a bit happier. But even after the contender series, when I done what I done on that, I was yeah. still very reserved. I think yeah. I'm just. Reserved on like in front of the cameras, but backstage with my team, I'm a lot happier, I guess. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. One of the main reasons why I wanted to talk to you is you. It's really inspiring to be close to a any top athlete's journey and career. But then there's these moments within a person's journey and career where you think, bloody hell, this is a this is a rough spot. And how are they going to respond? As a commentator, I, I sit down and I look at this this is my job to do so and I'm, I'm quite an empathetic person so when I'm looking at people's journeys I sort of take it on board and think how would I be in that situation because I'm trying to convey that to viewers yeah. right because I think I'm probably more like them than what you guys are you yes, know you yeah. guys are like the 0 point something percent and so seeing what you've been through since you joined the UFC well from the contender series uh, and then to now get to this point, and I know it's still just another step on, on the ladder, but I, but I still think it's worth highlighting at this point. So if we can tread back a little bit, like that debut, I mean, you'd gone from the Contender Series, which was a very pressured, pressured situation. I've never felt anything like it. But boy, did things come crashing down to <laughs> earth, didn't they? <laughs> it was, it's uh, DC said it, he goes, it was like a dream turned to nightmare. And it was like the dream scenario for me, like coming back to fight in the UK after so many years away, traveling, fighting like hostile countries yeah. against opponents that are like hometown people and being able to come home to the biggest organization in the world was like a dream. Yeah. So it all come crashing down when that last part, the fight is the last bit turned to a nightmare. Yeah. And it was like, in my head, it, like I was like, fuck. I was so caught up in the moment of that night. You watched my walk out to oh, the going in, going in like the whole week, the whole thing. I, I was embracing it all. I enjoyed yeah. it all like I do every fight week. Well, is it important to do that? A hundred percent. But at the same time, you have to remember what you're there to do. Mm -hmm. And I lost that. I wasn't there to fight. Oh, you really think? I believe so. I believe I was more caught up in the walk out, the being in the UFC, and everything surrounding it. That the fight was just going to have play out and I was going to win. Okay. Whereas you have to actually go in there and earn that f win. You've yeah. got to go in there and fight someone for that win that's also trying to come and take your head off. Yeah. I was past that. I didn't think past that. But I was not in that moment. And I think that's what cost me. Right. Um, so it again, wasn't, we talk about jitters. So this wasn't jit, um, no, if I understand yeah, yeah, this right. Yeah. It's not like jitters and nerves for something. It was actually more... More the other way, more like a bit too comfortable. Too comfortable, like way too comfortable. If you watch the walkout from the last fight in Canada and the fight in the UK, I'm looking around, I'm taking all all this shit, I'm taking it all in. I'm sorry, I don't have that. No, 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 but, of course, you can say um, whatever. I'm taking it all in, I'm looking around. Regardless, I am walking to a cage to fight yeah. someone. Yeah. I was too comfortable. You need to have them nerves. You need to be on edge, unique, because that makes you sharp, I believe. This right. is in my opinion. Yeah. If I'm a bit scared, I'm a bit nervous, I actually think I perform better right. because you're on edge, you're, you're sharper. Yeah. You're more like alert. 
if you're comfy and everything, it's like just getting off the sofa now and having a fight. You couldn't do it yeah. because you you haven't got that kind of go. You know, yeah. those like twitch. So, yeah, like if you like, it's easy to see it as well. It's easy me talking about it because it's done now. Yeah. But you can go back and watch the walkout of both fights yeah. and see the different person. Yeah. Total different person. So, yeah, it was dream to nightmare, and um, I paid the price. You know, like it was, <laughs> if this if this journey was easy. Anyone's journey, yeah, getting to the UFC, yeah, then everyone yeah. would do it. Yeah. It's not easy. And getting even getting to the UFC is not easy. But yeah. trying to stay in the UFC is even harder, you know? So, yeah, yeah like, it's, it's going to make for a better story, I believe. Yeah. But it definitely made me realise where my mind needs to be to step in there and fight someone. Yeah. I just, it was a total different switch. Like, I, I needed it to happen for many reasons, weight classes and stuff like that. Mm. But... If I would have kept winning, I would have carried on doing it. I would have, it would have been totally different. Yeah. Like my whole UFC thing could have been totally different. But I looked at, I looked back and after the fight, and it was like the amount of fighters that are now champions and high, high up in the UFC lost their debuts. I couldn't right. believe how many there was. Right. And I was like, I was like, oh wow, because in my head I was the only one. I was like, fuck, like come on, yeah. I was the only one. Um, but when you look back, you're like, no, some guys, it's it's that bit how you come back from it, how you move forward, how you get past it, that makes a difference. And yeah, now I'm on a win. Everyone's like, I'm riding high. Yeah. But I know what it's like to be at the highest yeah. highs and lowest lows. Yeah. So it's about keeping that yeah. hunger. You definitely felt the, felt the lows. Oh, yeah. What, what was, can you describe in like, in relative Sam terms, when you had that, you had the moment by yourself when all the team's gone or whoever it was and you sat down with it, where were you at? Uh, down, pretty down. Yeah, yeah, it weren't nice. Uh, again, I was coming off an eight-fight win streak. I was like riding high for so long. It was more again the same when I win and my team and everyone's so happy. It was probably harder for me seeing how down and everyone was so concerned for me. Right. Same thing for me. I'm I'm very like cool with myself, like cool with myself in my mindset and how I mm. how driven I am and stuff like that. I don't need no one to tell me I'm great or. I'm shit. I don't need it. So it hurts me more seeing like after that loss because going into that fight, I had my family around. I had like yeah, the whole team. My mum was there. My whole team. Your mum on the on the Friday. All yeah. that. All that was again. It was like wrong in a way, like in my head because I hadn't been used to that. But I was traveling away, having no family. It was just you're there to fight. It's business. Mm. I weren't going on holidays. I was going to fight someone. So I was switched on. Coming home, I was like rolling out of bed, you know, like just traveling up there, just pottering around the UFC world. This is amazing. Kind of losing the f like sight of what I had to do at the end of the week. Um, but yeah, that hurt me more after the fight is seeing how upset and concerned everyone was for me. That hurt. But at the same time, it also helped because it made him realize that I'm not invincible and that I can be. No one cared about the last eight opponents. Everyone was just, like in my like around my circle. Everyone was just so happy to see me win. Right. No one was concerned how no they went home. Towards those no one guys. cared because yeah. I was winning. Yeah. So now I was on the other end of it. It made them kind of wake up and realize that like, you can win, you can lose. Like yeah. you can be on the other end of it, you know. And yeah. going into this one, I could see that in everyone around me. The concern was real again. But that also is a good thing in a way because it keeps you human. It keeps you real and realize what you are going in there to do. Mm. And that kind of. Keeps you alert, keeps you, again, as much as I'm switched on, everyone around me is kind of like, realises there's a job to do at the end of this. It's not just all living the high life, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, you said that the concern from people around you, because that's a difficult thing, I believe, for partners of fighters. Um, I know that you live, you still live with your folks, and, uh, and I'm going to get onto that, because you have like a little master plan. There's clearly a lot of sacrifice. But how do they behave? Like I, I, I've, I remember I've only done a few little bits and pieces and, and uh, my wife at a grappling event, so God forbid she did see me do like boxing or MMA, she went white yeah. and I'm looking at her just before I step on the mat and go, what are you worried about? And this is just a grappling yeah. contest. Yeah. So how were, how were you managing the reactions of other people? Because well, you, you, you've got no say in it, but people are probably putting certain emotions onto you which might not be healthy yeah. in your preparation. Yeah, no, 100%. And you kind of disconnect from it. Like, my parents are very good. Like, they've seen the whole journey. They've seen I have my ups and downs. It's like a roller coaster of emotions throughout fight camp before even fight week. 
like you, you have a good day, you have a bad day, you're hungry one day, you're, you're full of food. You know what I mean? Yeah. Everything goes ups and downs. My parents know me very well. If I need to be left alone, just leave me alone. Like that took time, don't get me wrong. It wasn't always like that. It was tough. Um, snapping at my parents, stuff like that. For like when I'm in a bad mood and they're, they've got nothing. It's like little things like that. You don't realise pay a factor, but they've got to know over the years when to like, same with my missus, same with my partner. She knows, just let me focus, like when to leave me alone, when to like let me focus. Um, when I'm good, I'm good. And that's part of the journey. Like it's not all, they're in it with you, you know. You're, I'm the one fighting, but the sacrifice others make around me, my team, everyone around that, they're a part of it the whole way through. So they suffer the same as I do, but in a different way, probably more emotionally. Right. And my mum, leading up to this one, you could see that like, Total different energy from my mum, my dad, my partner, everyone. Yeah. The the little, are you okay? I was trying, like a bit more concern. Yeah. Whereas before it was kind of like, oh yeah, how was training? Oh, you're good. Yeah, yeah. Because I've been winning. Yeah. They they just think I'm going to go in there and smoke this fool. Yeah. Like yeah. they don't realise. They understand the work that I put in. Of course, they yeah. see how I'm out three times a day, just in and out, come sleep, go back out. But you could see the energy change and made it more real and more human. And I kind of, yeah. it's good for like I said before, it's good for them to know that. And again, my team and everyone like that, it got to a point where they thought, kind of, I don't know that they thought I was invincible because you're fighting, I understand that, but I just, winning was normal. I was yeah. on an eight fight win streak. It's like, oh, Sam's fighting, he's yeah. going to go and win. Yeah. Of course, they still think like that now. Yeah. But they know the, con the risk that I have stepping in there as well. So, yeah, it's, it, they understand, but I'm, get, I'm getting better as well. Before, I'd be very disc like, disconnected from anything else apart from I'd be so tunnel vision yeah but now I know when to switch on and switch it off yeah which is very good it's important to have a bit I think that comes with maturity and age as well where yeah. I was younger I didn't care for anything or anyone I was yeah. so tunnel vision on my goal and my dream but as you get older you realise you lose friends you lose obviously you also learn who's with you for the yeah. right reasons yeah. who's not but at the same time you can push family and stuff like that away from you because you're so tunnel vision yeah instead of just being a bit more considerate. And over the years, I've got better at that. My missus will tell you, she'd been with me since I was a, my first pro fight. Yeah. And uh, yeah, she stuck by me the whole time. But at the yeah. same time, she's seen the the bad side of things. And also now she's like, thinks it's a total different person, how I act yeah. throughout a training camp and into yeah. the fight. So it's pretty amazing. Yeah, no, you, you have got a good support system there. and uh, But I think it goes for anyone that's got like a... Like lofty goals, just so you know you're not alone, and it's pretty normal. Like I go, I suffer. I've been very guilty of compartmentalizing yes. a lot of stuff, yeah. and like I'm not doing this. If I've got this this gig coming up, then nothing else matters. Yeah. But it sounds like heroic to do things like that, but actually the human condition is yeah. a little different. You need a, you need a few ingredients of a few different things. Yeah. So I, th I think you're right to learn that. But when you're young. Like, and you haven't got all the yeah. stuff going on around, yeah. and it's easy to do that, and, and no one can be blamed for it. Exactly. I've, you've, we've spoken about the ones that truly matter, like those around you and your support system, but I, I'm just trying to figure out what the wider uh, opinion was from outside. You go through something like that in front of a, a watching world. Did you, that, did, did you get a bunch of stuff, good, bad, or indifferent from people that you didn't know, fans of the sport, sports fans, etc. Yeah, you get like, again, I see so many fighters say it, until you're in it yourself, you realise, they say like, fans are fickle. And like, in not in a bad way, it's in a way that, if you're, lo if you're winning, they're riding you. Yeah. If you lose, you're only good as your last fight pretty much, yeah, but yeah. you're, they're riding what they last see. And they could, the same people, that were, it was weird, because I noticed it, walking out as well the same fans that were booing me were the same ones reaching out to slap my hand when I walked out the um, cage after so they're like you were not supporting me now you're supporting me it's like very like so when I lost it was like they're all on you like you're not this you're not that again I don't know who you are yeah. your opinion does not matter to me I've never really cared for if I care about you and people know the people that are around me that I know that I care about and they care about me I care about your opinion. Right. If you're not part of that, I couldn't care less. Like, say yeah. what you want. It, I couldn't care. I haven't got anything to say back to you. I don't care. Um, enjoy your life. Yeah. That's all I care. <laughs> well, that's good. So, so you didn't feel like there was any any more pressure necessarily coming externally? No, no, no. I, I, the pressure was high 
like just internally i couldn't yeah. let the if i let the outside be pressured oh, i don't know if i would have i would have folded probably right like there's way too much once you get to this stage and i can only imagine it being worse as you get higher up right. like uh if you start to care about the opinions of people that are not in your circle mm. that pressure even thinking about that pressure it's too much you wouldn't be able to handle it like yeah. i don't think anyone in the world could handle it yeah. so that's why you notice as fighters get fighters have their circles as they get higher up their circle gets smaller they trust a certain amount of people they have a very close and i'm very fortunate i've got a very close unit the reason you end up with that is because we're in the limelight we're under the spotlight yeah if we cared so much about the outside opinions we'd all we wouldn't be where we are today yeah you care about the people around you you yeah. know that's about yeah. it uh, it's good that you've got that figured out so what was the process then what do you do when you you have the loss um, but you're still at the UFC, you know, you've got your contracts and then you know another opportunity is going to come its way, but how do you go from UFC 286, was it? Is that what, no, I can't remember. What was the number, the, that March that one, card, yeah. uh, to then the, the next step to moving forward? Well, yeah, like obviously you take the, once you're healed and everything like that, you want to get back in there and just right that wrong. That's all you want to do because if I believe that, I wouldn't have got to where I was today if I was only capable of just going in there and getting knocked out. I know yeah. what I'm capable. I'm capable of showing I'm one of the best fighters in the world. It's how I got to the UFC. It's how I'm in the UFC. Mm. But you just want to get back in there and just show what you're capable of. And the stresses and the pressure of the build-up to it is another total next quit, like another bit of the story. But the whole uh, mindset of just getting back in there, but that also took time because I was also trying to stay a lightweight and my body's just getting bigger. And obviously I signed a fight it was like September, so I was fully. They wanted me back in the next London card, and I turned around and said, "Look, I'm not. I wouldn't have been healthy enough to fight mm. straight away um, with injuries and stuff like that." And again, I didn't want to step in there half-assed. Mm. I've always been one that prided myself on my preparation. Yeah. And they offered me September, um, which was great. I was like, "Perfect!" Yeah. In France. So you took time. You had like no contact time off, didn't you? you yeah. Just... Like I, the thing is, what stopped me was good. Like I would have had like a concussion and stuff like. But what stopped? I broke my nose in two places. Right. And trust me, the pain in your nose, it's like those sensitive... That big old nose. It's, it's like a perfect <laughs> looking nose, yeah? Like this perfect nose had a couple of cracks in it. And it, it, was, it didn't need realigning or anything, it was fine. Right. But the, it's like a, if someone touched it, you'd feel pain. So that kind of kept me out of contact and training. Because like, you know, I'm like, oh yeah, six weeks, all right, I'll be back in three. Like, yeah, oh, yeah, I know yeah. I'd be back. If, I, yeah. no, if my nose weren't broken, I just had a concussion, I probably would have been sparring in, like that week. Next week. I know what I'm like. I wouldn't right. have been able to stay at the gym. Yeah. But when you've got a pain that actually is like if someone hit it, because we're too tough for our own good as fighters, don't yeah. get me wrong, but there's certain things that are like you can't touch, like it's agonizing pain. Yeah. And uh, so I had to take time after the fight anyway to heal. I was still doing like, I'm always training as in the yeah. fact I, I like staying fit. I like always like being active. So yeah, you're dedicated still running, you, yeah. still, yeah, yeah, still doing all that kind of stuff. Working a bit. I would even like, I was training like, um, doing jiu-jitsu with a big face mask on just to protect and that was horrible because it whack it the slightest bit would be painful so yeah taking them like the right amount of time to let my brain heal uh my nose heal my face and uh yeah then it was like all right i'm ready to get back to it i went out to thailand trained a couple of weeks got myself in shape got like got my weight down what month was that that was uh probably like the end of june okay so i was like I knew that I went fighting on the London card, but I knew the France card was coming up for Paris, and I was like, I reckon I could be re like, I'll be ready by then. So yeah. I was like, let's go out to Thailand, do a couple of weeks of training, like a pre-camp kind of thing. Yeah, that's like an um, investment in yourself. Yeah, I, it always is. Like I, everything I do is kind of around this in some way, yeah, like or another. But yeah, I was like, let's go out there. It's hot out there. Um, learn a little bit um, at Bang Tao. Um, so I was there for a couple of weeks, come come home. My weight was good, obviously, because the food, out, everything's easier out there. I'm telling yeah. you, the food, Cheap the weather, well, isn't it? Oh, it's, it's easier to eat healthy out there than it yeah. is um, cheaper to eat healthier out there. So, yeah, done that, come home. And obviously, I'm training. The first start of camp, like, it got to the point where it's the first part of camp is fine. As soon as I have to start dropping the weight, I start losing, like, start losing more rounds. I start... Not losing rounds there, I'm getting beaten up. It's more like my strength and stuff starts to go because I'm bringing down the weight too much. And then I felt real sick. Like, I was, I'm never bed bound. Even if I got cold or something, I'll go for a walk. Mm. I, I couldn't get out of bed for like a week. I walk up the stairs, I'd be gassed at the top of the stairs, and that's not me. So I yeah. knew something was really wrong. 
So I was real sick, um, having to have like tests on my heart and stuff like that because I've always been known yeah, for having didn't, a. Didn't you have like a really bad training session or something where it like spark where it, you're like, oh, this. Oh right. yeah, yeah, yeah. So no, I got to training. I didn't even have the training session. I, so I ride my bike, a bike to training, and I'm like not blacking out on the way to training, but I'm like feeling dizzy and stuff. I got to training, and I've just put the bike on the phone. I've just sat. I was there a half hour early, so I'm on my own. Just sat on. I had to sit down. I couldn't like do anything. I couldn't like get my Jeez. body to work. And it weren't until like Dave come in and everything like that. And I was like, I'm not good, you know, like something's not right. Like I could barely get up. Like I was like, in, every time I stood up tall, I'd get lightheaded, like, I'm going to pass out. I had bread, I'd be eaten and everything. But, right. and then obviously I went to the hospital. I had all kind of, had to have heart tests and stuff like that. Because I've always had a heart, low heart rate, like really yeah, low. Yours is, like, was it 28? I've was hit 29, 29. 29 I hit, yeah, 29 on fight week. Series? Uh, yes, contender series. So yeah. contender series. And I even like previous ones, I've got so low like during fight week where you're relaxing, letting your body recover and you're not putting as many calories in, your body's not working hard enough. So my heart started slowing down and it was like 29, which I say is yeah, healthy and everything. But then I was having like my blood pressure drops and stuff. Don't know what it was. So when they both dropped together, your heart rate and blood pressure, you start to get blackouts and like faint and stuff like that. Right. Jesus so that was the start of it all. So I felt really sick anyway. I had to pull out of that fight. And that was the turning point to say like, just the enjoyment of training like I've always enjoyed training I've always enjoyed learning the weight cut like the weight lot like dropping to lightweight trying to even maintain that frame it was like a Dave said it was like a figure skater like I'd be doing like a marathon a week running cycling swimming on top of training Your twice a day numbers were like comparable to an um, amateur triathlete uh, but it's crazy on top of training at, yes. uh, in the sport we're doing which is it's too much I, I've realised as I've got older it's all good when you're 21 and your body recovers and everything like that. Even then, it was a lot of training. And we all, we're all, like, every fighter and stuff, we're all, like, trying to... They end up overtraining and stuff like that because we're all trying to push our bodies. But I was doing it to an extreme level, like, injuries and stuff that I'd pick up as I got lighter were just stupid. And it got to the point I was falling out of love with the sport because of the diet. As soon as I signed a fight, it wasn't the fight I was bothered about. I was like, yeah, I get to fight. It's the diet. I was like, yeah, here we go again. Yeah. The diet, you know, so... And what we... What are we talking about when you were walking around? Like, how much weight are you having to manage? So I was managing and sitting around about eighty-four kilos. But I was eight. But I'd done a DEXA scan after the Vegas um, contender series. They took me in, done a DEXA scan and everything, and I was eighty-four kilos with eight percent body fat. Right. So where am I losing fourteen kilos? Yeah. I ain't losing no more fat, so it has to eat into my muscle. It has to yeah. start eating away at other things. And again, I'm not. I'm six foot three as well, so. Yeah. <laughs> it's taken away you can see my face and see my body shrink like a boy yeah. when i started getting close to that kind of weight and it just weren't healthy it weren't healthy for me to be and doing, you that, doing anymore. that by burning calories because you weren't non-stop like, like your your meals you made them look attractive hey, in a way i guess you had to it got to that point like yeah little you're trying little things which was okay when i was a couple even a couple years ago it was yeah. okay like it would be hard but it weren't bad it got to the point where it was getting bad like yeah. I would make them look good, little meals. Yeah. But after training three, four hours, and yeah. I mean training, like I would be training three, four hours on top of cycling a run and I'd be eating a piece of salmon with three bits of asparagus. Yeah. What we say, if we're talking calorie wise, it's probably not even 500 calories. Jeez. And I probably burnt about two, 3,000. Yeah. And that would be my kind of ratio. So how long do you reckon you're in a cal calorie deficit for? <sighs> The whole time. Eight weeks? Yeah, probably more. Like, I do long camps anyway. I'm always training, so I'm always, yeah. as soon as I get a fight, I'm having to start structure that. But I would say a good eight weeks, I'm dieting and, like, you know, type, writing out all my stuff and everything yeah. that I do um, to get it down healthily enough to make the weight. Yeah. Because don't get me wrong, there's fighters out there that are lightweight that sit around 84 kilos and they can drop it two weeks out and stuff like that. Like, yeah. they get the weight off, but... I'm having to do it correctly to even have a chance of cutting the water weight to put it back on. Yeah. I saw you do the, the cut. I've not been present for a cut of yours before, but you just bathed off one, toweled up, had a drink and a, and something else. Yeah. It was a secret. I'm not yeah. going to say what it is. Yeah. Uh, before bedtime, while you floated a little uh, over the night, and that was it. It was, like, oh, well, this was a... Yeah. From seeing, like, the massive yeah. drop, I was like, well, that's bit of a non-event really because yeah. you've extended it for and... eight to 12 weeks of dieting before that yeah. like the weight cut is still i still do 10 pounds i still cut and yeah the same yeah. amount as probably other fighters are doing but it's 10 pounds of, of what that's what yeah. it got to like we were laughing because at this one this fight week my i started the weight cut and my face was sweating like 
But when I'd start a weight cut when I was at lightweight, I've already taken out my head. My, you see the cheekbones yeah. drawn in like this. And when I start to sweat, don't go, I'll get the 10 pounds off. But it's not from my head. Like I'm, It's already yeah. gone. I've already taken that water yeah. out before yeah. I've even got into fight week. So how long am I dehydrated for? Like It's not 24 hours like other fighters. It's two weeks, three weeks. I don't know how long I've took it out of my brain already for just to make it look like I'm at the weight, you know? So I was struggling way too much. And it, yeah. it got to the point, I said it, Years ago, I yeah, said. It, I said if it got too much, I would go up a weight class. Thankfully, I'm six foot three, so I wouldn't be out like with reach and range. I wouldn't have been outsized, but it was just a thickness. Obviously, there were big boys at world weight. Yeah, but again, the last couple of years, I've been big. I'm a big boy, you yeah. know. Like I didn't feel outsized in there against this guy. Um, yeah, so it was just time to go up and go up a weight class, and that was the that was the deter determined factor. Is when I had to pull out due to sickness yeah. um from the france card yeah um in september and then obviously it took me about four weeks to get back to health and everything like that and we we're yeah. like all right we're going up to well wait i spent like four to six weeks with the ufc and their strength conditioning team because yeah because uh, i was going to ask you when mm. you said about the, the the scans and the tests that you did they said you were optimal for lightweight but also yeah optimal for welterweight yeah i was above yeah it was like a only done off the test they've tested so sure, okay. it's not over the whole lightweight division it's only only the fighters have had dexa scans by the ufc right. it's still over it could have been over 100 or I, yeah. can't, I can't remember the numbers but but how do you think that that helped your mind again this is me projecting yeah because you're thinking oh, i'm going up i had all of these advantages i'm going up a weight class now and i've probably got to turn it around fairly quickly um, do you think that the scientists at the PI telling you you're actually optimal for welterweight as well, do you think that helped in your decision-making? Well, it actually w broke the decision-making in the first place because ever since I'd done that DEXA scan, I've always been like, oh, God, I too, like what's going on? What am I losing for going down to lightweight? Right. Because I fought in March at lightweight after that contender series fight, and that was more in my head. But right. and then So I, it was more... A, disadvantage let's say i can't think of the right word for it but it i was looking at it planted the seed in the wrong way right in my head thinking i am got to be losing something else if i'm 84 kilos 80 percent body fat gotcha um so i went the other way but and then i turned it around to a positive because there's different ways you can look at any situation at any way of life there's a positive and negative and what yeah. you can control and what you can't control yeah once you realize them kind of things you can easily flip it and then i started to look at it i was like a specimen at lightweight yeah. You know, according to the DEXA scan and for the um, who had been tested, I was above average, yeah. and then I was um, I was in the like pool for to be a welterweight. That was then. Yeah, that was back then when I was a lightweight. Yeah, coming off of a lightweight fight, so yeah. After I had to put go up a weight class, I actually spent the time listening to the UFC, um, followed their strength and conditioning program for like four to six weeks. Right. Um, bulked out, got a bit bigger, let my body fill out a little bit, which I'm still doing now. Yeah, I've always, since I was 16 years old, 16 I was like 70, but since then for 10 years I've always maintained that lightweight frame, kept it kept it small, yeah. never allowed myself to fill out, yeah. like get big. Um, so I'd done that, I allowed, I'd followed the plan, I've let my body fill out a little bit, and don't get me wrong, I'm not massive, but I'm definitely a welterweight. Like, yeah even cutting the weight down to world weight and stuff, I still cut 10 pounds, but I still regain the same amount of weight I did when I was a lightweight. Like I only put on between seven and nine, you know, like seven, right. nine kg. I do the same at world weight. Okay. So it's not much different. It's no different, but it's about how much, what I'm cutting. Yeah. You know, like it's not lightweight. I was cutting like yeah. Into before the cut. Like yeah. <laughs> that's what, now I'm cutting 10 pounds like everyone else is. Yeah. I'm putting it back on. Yeah. Before I was cutting and then cutting on top of that, you know, yeah. like it was too much. Yeah. So. Did you have any reservations about going up to welterweight at all? No. Like I obviously you have them thoughts. Am I am I a welterweight? You wouldn't. These are all questions again. You can easily answer them by just letting it play out. Like instead of you can beat yourself up. Everyone can. You can beat yourself up in your head with all the things that could go wrong. Yeah. But you can easily fix your brain by just telling you all the stuff that's going to go right. So yeah. it's easy fixed. Uh, all these questions. I easily caught, controlled it and calmed myself down and put it into perspective that we'll find out. Yeah. We're going to find out. Yeah. Like, the only thing I, like going up to weight, I knew, I said, like, uh, going up to weight, I would go up as soon as it, I fell out of love with the sport. I fell straight back in love as soon as I signed the fight to uh, a weight because I could focus on the fight. Yeah. I weren't focused on the scale. Yeah. I, I was professional enough to make lightweight when I was 
a big boy yeah. going down, yeah, I'm professional to make, yeah. like, I make world weight. Yeah. Um, so I could focus on the fight. I yeah. was training for the fight. I was training for the opponent. And that's the first time I'd done that. And the only thing I saw, um, it was Devin Haney talking, because he went up a weight class and he was like, I was training just as hard and I was recovering correctly. Yeah. But at the end of a week, I would be like, okay. Like I'd be like, not like I did at lightweight. And I'd be like, am I training hard enough? Right. And I had to like, tell myself like no I am training like, good my, thing for you is you write stuff down so you can probably you know that I, I, I train just as hard as I did a lightweight that's a good, that's but a good in the right areas yeah. and that's uh, like, and Devin Haney's like he said in his like camp after the fight he was taught I saw an interview him talking about he was questioning if he worked hard enough because he didn't feel the same depletion that he did when he was at light, uh, that smaller yeah. weight and that was the same when I was at lightweight at the end of every week I'd be literally like bed bound for Sunday just to yeah. recover and that wasn't anything to do with the training that was about the replenishing the muscle the body yeah. whereas I, I feel good now I feel correct yeah. and I'm able to push and it gets to the weekend and I, you can't help but look at other fighters and not compare but see what you take anything you can from it yeah. I see other fighters doing stuff on Sunday and like or Saturday night or training once once a day or stuff like that and I'm like how on earth have you got energy at the end of the week? Right. Like, I am absolutely spent. Like, I've yeah. got nothing left. Yeah. Like, yeah. come Saturday night, I finished my last session, I am dead. Yeah. Like, how are you doing it? And now I'm like, at well, wait, this camp, I'm like, come on, let's yeah. go. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Monday, I, I love Mondays anyway, but Sunday I'm with my missus, I'm chilling, I'm, I'm buzzing, you know? Like, I've got yeah. so much energy. I feel like a kid again. Yeah. I know I'm still young, but I feel yeah. even like, like a 21-year-old, you know? It's crazy. Yeah. I want to come back to those other aspects. You were just talking about chilling with your missus. And I, um, there's mm. a lifestyle element to all of this, which I will get to. Yeah. But you also did say uh, a whole other part of the story was the anxiety leading up to this fight. Yeah. What, uh, g- give us a sense of what that looked like. Yeah, like everyone gets like anxious. It's more the, the, anti- the, the anticipation of no, you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. You can be the most prepared fighter in the world. Yeah. And this is what makes fighting so great. Don't yeah. get me wrong. Yeah. You can step in there and it can be one punch and change everything. And it's that's what makes it makes you anxious, makes you, the anxiety and stuff like that. I don't suffer with any anxiety kind of everyone has gets anxious and yeah. everyone and but I don't good, have it's anxiety. To, it's good to get the nerves and Yeah, all no, that. and I alive. I have always like that's why someone someone spoke to me before the fight. So how do you deal with the nerves and stuff like that? And it's like it's not the fact you don't get nervous anymore. You just get better at handling them yeah, or using okay. them to your advantage. Yeah. I'm more scared if I ain't nervous and I'm not anxious and I'm not on edge because you don't say you don't fire the same. You don't you're not alert, you know, like yeah. you're not on the on your like on your game. So the anxiety and stuff like that, coming off a loss is a lot more. Like yeah. cuz you're like, oh god, if it's a, the, the, a lot more negative come from it because yeah. you're thinking all the things that could go wrong. Yeah, like if you win, you lose. You win, you can. You... How, how did you stop that sort of those thoughts cascading? So well, you, you just went... ca- hard work. I'm not gonna lie. I, I pride myself on hard work, but that also helps. If I'm prepared to the best I possibly can, and I know I'm putting it all in, yeah, the outcome's gonna be what it is. Yeah, I'm gonna go out there, put my best foot forward, and if I know I put my best foot forward, it is what it is. You know right. what I mean? Again, maybe if I would have lost that fight, it would have been, am I UFC level? Then it would have been more doubts. But yeah. again, I control things. I, I say to myself, the main thing I say is control what you can control. Mm-hmm. If it's not in your control, why are you wasting the energy, precious energy that you could be putting in something else yeah. on that? You know, So the negative thoughts and stuff like that, you just count with some good stuff. Yeah. Like, there's enough good and just, just work hard. If I, I always feel like I could have a bad thought or a bad day if I'm working hard, it soon goes away. Yeah. Like if I get a run in or I push my body to the limit, I'm so thinking about like the body getting pushed to the limit. I ain't thinking about them thoughts anymore. And yeah. they pass and then you go forward, you know? Yeah. So yeah, I, I don't think, obviously it's more when you lose, but everyone has doubts. Everyone has like good days, bad days, but yeah. main thing is you just keep going, you know? Yeah, just yeah. don't stop. And it, or let them take over because what if you gain from letting them take over? Mm. Nothing. You just, now you're, you're not challenging yourself. You're not pushing yourself. You're not stepping out of that box you're in mm. because you're scared of what's outside of it. But once you do it, even if it, if even if you step out and it's like I said, if I would have went out and lost, at least I went out and done it. Yeah. Like at least I tried. You know, like a, me sitting at home. Doing, like I remember Tom Aspinall saying he's never going to win the title by sitting on his couch. So he accepted the fight on short notice, and that's what I mean. He could have been on his couch watching that fight. He ain't gained nothing from it, has he? 
but he took the risk and look how he paid off now he's mm. champion of the world so those kind of thoughts I guarantee every fighter's having them mm. you just get better at controlling them that's all it is let's see what's possible that's kind of that's pretty much it because yeah. nothing's possible if you do nothing yeah, yeah. that's guaranteed yeah. but you don't know what's possible if you do just try yeah. so and I just think as you the better fighters the the higher end fighters or anyone in life the, the more you do it the better you get out of control in it. Yeah. That's all it is. Like you see amateurs, how nervous they are and stuff. And they're like, how do you, do you not get nervous? Like, no, I do. Yeah. I feel the same as my first fight. Probably, I've just got better at controlling them. That's yeah. all it is. Yeah. And if they weren't there, I'd be more scared. Was there, a, was there any big reconfiguration or a big change that you took into this fight from your last or last previous? Um, I would say the mindset of... I, I knew why I need... I've fought a lot of times now. I was just focused on the task at hand. And nice. that's why I could, like, you see me walking, I didn't care about the crowd. I could have been fighting that guy in the car park. I could mm. not care. I know I can fight. I'm good at fighting. I yeah. wouldn't have got to here if I wasn't. But I was focused on that. Yeah. Nothing else mattered to me. Nothing. Mm. After I took it all in, I took in the crowd. I took in everything after the job was done. And that will be my mindset going forward um, with every fight. Yeah. And again, even like the mindset of, Sleeping on a win, you wake up with a loss. I, I ain't sleeping on no win. I'm, but I was back in the gym as if I lost that fight. And that's why I'll have that mindset. I had that mindset before. Mm. Don't get me wrong, I didn't lose that. Even like the eight fight win streak, I'd be back in the gym straight away mm. as if I lost. So it's no different now. I just, I just got the win. Do you feel like you got, you got better? With everything that you've just described to us, weight, illness, blah, blah, blah. Do you feel like you still managed to get better going into that last fight? Yeah, I'm always, I feel like I get better every single fight because I've got that mindset. I think it's a mindset. You can easily stop listening to people around you and stuff like that, but I listen and I've always got a growth mindset. I'm always in the gym, not just in the gym to be in the gym. I'm in there because I want to get better mm. in all aspects, even to the point I want to improve outside the gym. But I do believe inside the gym, I am there to learn and get better. Mm. And uh, yeah, I, I went to Thailand I, I was traveling up to Birmingham um, to Renegade and getting yeah. sparring rounds in there, all learning. Yeah, like I work. MVP coming down. MVP they come down. They loved that on the commentary. I know they, they? milked that. Well, they it's, it's, but the thing is, they cha they changed it. I, I, what I said, I got a sparring session in with MVP and I picked up great knowledge. I don't know how they worded it on the thing, but it made it sound like I've been training him for like the whole camp. Yeah. I only trained once with him, but that one session was valuable to me. You know, and right. I made that I made that clear in the post fight interview and to the commentary team before yeah. like just that one session was like a good amount you know I really yeah. took so much from him and I, that's my mindset yeah. like he could people beat me up people beat me up every day like in the gym and stuff like that but if I take something from him and I'm learning who's really winning you yeah. know so yeah. and if I can go out there and perform when it matters yeah I believe I'm the one winning yeah you you did say you were sick and tired of a few things in your in the post fight media scrum and I think that's it. We can like take that as lightly as it is, but from someone that's sort of seen your journey and seen where you're at now, like I was like, oh bloody hell, man, that's uh, like because if this didn't go the right way, this is yeah. rough, isn't it? Yeah. So can you talk about the where where you felt? Because it you were saying it with a smile on your well, it was kind of with a smile on your face through victory, but I'm sure that you are pretty sick and tired of all of this because this is a fucking hard game. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, no. It's I don't know. I recommend if... this sport to people from your to like to yeah. be a fighter. Yeah, no, no, no. Like I wouldn't say I'm not sick and tired of the game. I'm sick and tired of the struggle. Yeah, yes. Yeah, so. And that's totally different because I love the game. And I think yeah. if I worked a full time job, I would still find time to train. Yeah. I am sick of struggling. Yeah, I should. I, I, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. That's that's and maybe I didn't word it right in the interview, but I'm pretty sure the guy asked me, and what made me smile was the fact he assumed I already had a car, had a house, yeah, and I just wanted bigger. Yeah, I haven't got shit. Well, this, again, so, yeah, and this is, um... and that's what this, when I say struggle. If you put, if I put the hours in, the same hours I put into this, yeah, into a, a, a normal job or anything, I'd probably be a manager earning a good amount of wage, probably. Maybe I don't know. I, yeah. I don't know. That's why I've chose this path. I'd, I'd have thought so. But I'm ready for it to pay off. You know, like I, I'm, I, I'm very. It's not even like I'm stupid with money. I'm very smart. With yeah. my money and my how I live and yeah. everything, I get my stuff in order. I'm not stupid because you could be making millions, and if you're wasting it, then you could still be struggling. You only, four. you only got half a paycheck last year. Yes, and I made that last 
I had to borrow money um, to get through to this one, mainly to pay for the medicals and stuff like that to fight in uh, Toronto again. Um, and that's what I'm done with, you know. Like I made that money stretch, and I went yeah. to Thailand. Yeah. Like I, I and I was traveling up to Birmingham every week, and yeah. I got like I said, I got a good support system around me. But I have never been one for asking for money or no, okay. uh, um, like, oh, can I borrow this or borrow that? Yeah. And the people around me offer it because they see how hard work is. Not I'm sat on the couch asking for money so I can sit here all day. Yeah. I'm putting my, I'm busting my balls every day. One so they're the happy to help, but I don't like to ask. Yeah. I, I, I like to, I'll figure it out. It's okay. I'll figure yeah. it out and get through it. So I made that money stretch, but I'm done with that. I'm done yeah. with the struggle of life, like struggling, like living fight to fight and just, yeah, just struggling would in that it, way. Would it be fair to say that you're sort of putting your life you have been putting life on hold uh, to pursue this dream? Yeah. I, I, I've thought of nothing else. The people around me know I've thought of nothing else, but I'm also now at the point I want to progress my life with this dream. Yeah. It's kind of changed yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. The dream was all that mattered. Yeah. Um, and as you get older, you realise you can't just... I don't want to live at home anymore. I don't... Like, I've got the support system, but I need to... I'm going to move out with my partner as well and... They ain't free. None of that's free. No. So you have to have an income. You've got to bring that money in, you know. Yeah. And I have a great opportunity in the UFC. Yeah. The money you can earn in the UFC is absolutely amazing. Yeah. If you'd have fought three times, three wins... Uh, it's this a... would be a total different story. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. I could be a total different place this year. Yeah. But I'm not. I'm in the same place I was before the UFC, struggling. Right. So now this is the year. I went up to the commentary after and said, this is the year I changed my life. And when I say that, that is the, the guy that asked me after the interview. That is me getting a car. Like, I don't think I'll get car. I quite like my bike. I'm not going to lie. Cause well, I, I would like it keeps, it me, keeps me humble. The yeah. bike keeps me... My cardio is good. Cardio. And it ain't from getting in the car, driving to training. Yeah, the car... Yeah, it's on the bike. a little bit safer. Yeah, a little bit. Maybe. Um, but yeah, so the bike I would... But house. Um, yeah. I want to start changing things. I want to secure... Like, I'm very fortunate. No one depends on me. My partner, I think she's got a great business. Everything... Is very everyone's got their they're not relying on me to make yeah, a pay. Like, I haven't yeah. got children at the moment and stuff, so I'm yeah. not no one's relying on me. Yeah, I'm relying on me and yeah. I want to change it. So, yeah, that's what I meant when I say it. I'm not struggling as in with the sport. I I, I will struggle every day. Don't yeah. I'll put you enjoy more. That struggle. I, yeah, I enjoy love that, that struggle. Drive. Yeah, but the financial side, they say, yeah. that's what I'm done struggling with. Yeah, yeah, I bet. I have to say, I have to credit you with when I do turn up to the gym. Um, very often. You, uh, you, uh, yeah, clearly not. <laughs> um, of all the people that I train with, like you look like you're having the most fun. You're always there. You're such a great role model for anyone that wants to achieve anything, but particularly like when you're in that on the mat and you want to, we can all just turn around and say to the youngsters, you want to do well. And I've actually, you know, had some nice conversations with a few of the youngsters recently. I said, well, you know what's easy? Just, just follow that guy. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and we've got, there's some, a nice group of lads, but some of them are a bit miserable. And I think you you poke out in the sense that you've never been vocal about those other things. You've always been very positive and happy. But I just want you to know that it's not lost on probably quite a lot of us that yeah. you know there's maybe some brave facing that's going on. But uh, but you do have the opportunity now, and I think we're all very very happy that you now. Uh, and that's why I think I can say that now. Yeah. Because I've got to the point where it's an opportunity. Yeah. Like, I'm not looking for a handout. I'm not looking to be given oh, anything. No, no, no. And that's why... Well, those sponsors are great. Oh, because don't, they can oh, come on this journey. Don't get me wrong. Things can... Yeah, yeah, exactly that. I'm happy to take, um, like, sponsorship and stuff like that and come on the journey with me. But my point of it was, like, before the UFC, it was a whole point of getting to the UFC. But now I'm in the UFC, I can change... Uh, my hard work can change my life. Yeah. And I'm not sh I'm not shying away from hard work. I am yeah. willing to put the work yeah, in. yeah. But it can pay off now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Before yeah. it's like you're getting just, just it's just enough to get through to the next fight, and you, you're yeah. building up to get to where you want to be. But do you like everyone knows it pays well. It looks after their fires and stuff like that. If you are out there putting the work in and showing yeah. up, yeah, that's what I'm not ashamed. Like, I'm not like shy of doing. You no, know, like hard no. work. Now it's just going to pay off. And yeah, to young fighters, man, just train hard. There's no secret. Yeah. But again, I don't want them thinking I had like a. I was gifted that I didn't have to go to work when I was younger and earn it, like pay yeah. my rent to my parents. I weren't just living for free. I yeah. had to work a full time job. I was working yeah. seven days a week, but I found the time to have trained. Yeah. And paying and making excuses and saying, it's because you don't want it. If you yeah. really want it, you'll find the time. Yeah. I was working all night. I'd work all night and then train all day. Yeah. As you know, I'd work in a club all weekend. 
I do all sorts of work because I had still had, and that's thanks to my parents. The the grind I've got now is thanks to them. Yeah. Because they didn't let me since I turned sixteen, or even before that, if I wanted money, oh, I'd go out and earn it. Yeah. I'd go wash cars. I'd go. I've always been earn my money. Yeah. And when you're younger, you hate that because you're like, oh, you're not giving me money for sweets. But yeah, there's a reason, and it's paid off because that grind in my training, my grind, the hard work I put in is because of that. When I was younger, I always had to pay rent. I always had to pay my way. I yeah. was never gifted anything. And now I've still got that mindset. And in yeah. my tra- it's easy, like you said, this sport is brutal and training and it can get a lot. Yeah. And you can, it's easy to go, oh, I can't train today. I'm tired of or work in the morning. If you really want it, it'll pay off. And, you know, you've, to young fighters, if you really want it, and you've got to really want it because you will be tested and it is hard. But if you want it, you you find a way. Yeah. And I found a way. Yeah. No, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's great to watch, mate. Um, so what's the plan now? We're sitting just before February. Yeah, I spoke to my management uh, yesterday, maybe the day before. They're going to reach out to the UFC. I'm healthy. You know, I, thankfully, no serious injuries. A um, couple of niggles that I was dealing with before the fight that are just mm. getting fixed up, which are nothing major. Sort I went into tissue. the fight. Yeah. Nothing major. Just need a couple of days rest, but... Um, we're speaking with the UFC. I want to get a quick turnaround because when you're injured, all you want to do is fight. Yeah. So when you're healthy, you need to maximise it. You and do, yeah. that's what I'm going to do. Uh, we're and looking at May. Now. I know, exactly. Now, yeah. as I'm healthy. So uh, May... With the weight, you can turn things around. And that's another thing. With the, with the weight, I don't need to do 12-week camps just to get the weight off. I, mm. Or take a break after a fight because I need to let my brain and everything rehydrate like fully. I'm healthy. I'm a healthy professional athlete now and I want a quick turnaround. So we're looking at May, um, anytime in May, the, my management will speak with the UFC, yeah. see what's available. What nice. you want and what you get is two different things. Yeah. Um, but coming off that, they saw, obviously they know I'm injury free and I want to get back out there. So hopefully I get something in May, get, like I said, a quick turnaround and me wanting to change my life ain't going to be happening by sitting around waiting. You know, yeah, I want to yeah. get out there and make it happen. So. Yeah. Where are you gonna Where are you gonna do camps? Are you gonna go out to Thailand again? Yeah, I, th- I think uh, I think I might go up to Birmingham again. They've, yeah, it's amazing up there. Yeah. I wish it was closer, um, but it's yeah. not as far as going to Thailand. Yeah. So it's not too far. A great bunch of guys up there. And you need a car. Hour and a half. I got my missus' car for there now. I, if I had, I ain't getting a car, John. I'm keeping the bike. <laughs> I, my my partner is so nice that I get to use her car once a week when she doesn't use it to go to Birmingham and stuff. So right. um, I would look to go there again if it's a quick turnaround. Uh, maybe go Thailand after to train. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's the plan, I think. Go up to Birmingham, travel around a little bit, pick up as much knowledge as I possibly can. And get people down and, into the gym as well. Yeah. Do you reckon MVP, uh, will you be a part of his preparation? Um, I think I think MVP's coming in this week. Oh, I think he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he's coming in to get some work in this week. Oh, nice. um, I think Dave was talking to his coach, so maybe Wednesday or something. If I can help in any way, obviously... I don't want to be sparring all year round. Yeah, uh, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. I need to be smart. But there's still other things I can help with, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. Uh, grappling and yeah. stuff like that. So hopefully he'll be in this week, I think, um, if all goes to plan and he comes down. I'm always there. So yeah. if I can help, I would love to help. He's got Kevin Holland coming up. It's a great fight. So Oh, yeah. I guess you'd be quite a nice look, really, in a way, yeah, wouldn't you? Yeah, tall, rangy. But yeah. he, um, MVP's MVP, man. I yeah. don't think, yeah, he does what he does. It's it's incredible it to watch. It's very, very unique fight. Incredible yeah. to watch. I'm, I'm actually leaving, so I'm not going to be able to come down and yeah, get those a... little uh, pay-per-view oh, training rounds it's... that I can Yeah, check out. if I can help him in any way. Obviously, I'm taking yeah. a couple of weeks off to sparring, but grappling, I can still grapple. I can still wall wrestle and still, hopefully, and again, it only helps me. Yeah. Learning from someone like that or anyone that comes in, I take what I can from them and yeah, yeah, yeah. level up my game. No, it's really, I'm, I like operating at, at this level now in the UFC because my time... At, uh, at, let's just say my time previously there's been a lot of infighting or there was in mixed martial arts in yeah. UK MMA yeah. I should say so there wasn't a lot of match sharing but it's really nice to see like when we used to go down to UC MMA as a team yeah. London Shoot Fighters they You'd were be fighting one of them guys yeah. yeah and then you've got Titan and now yeah. I'll go and see Brad and those guys and you'll go up to, to Birmingham and, yeah. no it's great well, no, it's, they're all working together now I think it's got yeah. to that point the UK are working together and there's other organisations that are bringing in a lot of different fighters from different sure. countries so the UK aren't always fighting the UK anymore Yeah. even Cage Warriors do like Dublin and they're going about yeah. a bit more so before, like you said, it was literally UCMA. They didn't have international, that many international. Yeah. You yeah. had to match the UK versus UK. So it was yeah. rival teams. Whereas 
London shoot and the UK is just helping the UK now yeah. to take over the world which is yeah. it's great to be a part of and That's uh, good. I love it yeah nice one thanks for sitting down today with us Sam Not best of luck on the next steps thank you very much mate